There's a lot of community drama happening lately. Um, I, I mean, I think a part of it is just because Luna's in a little consolidation period. You can look at the Luna chart. You can see it's kind of going sideways. We just made all-time highs uh, <laughs> five, six days ago. But in crypto, a week is a millennia. And since those euphoric times where everyone was very happy, we've gotten some drama inside the ecosystem, not specifically with anything Luna, but with some of the apps that are now launching on Luna. Just remember that as as early as March, there were only two apps. Um, there was like Anchor and Mirror. And now there's like six apps, but we have we have dozens of apps coming on the other side of Columbus 5, which is now, as according to this video, uh, about 11 days. And two of the apps that are launching one is Star Terra, Star Terra, which uh, they released their tokens, but their app hasn't launched yet. And Apollo, who has, they haven't released their tokens, they haven't launched yet, but what they have done is a community farming event where you stake your tokens and you get IOUs of uh, Apollo after they do their token generation event. Now, there was some drama, and that drama culminated in maybe the number one influencer of the lunatic community, Nicholas Flamel, basically saying that the day has arrived where he is going to be less active as a lunatic. And a part of this is because of the the blowback that people have been giving him, calling him a, a paid shill because he stood up for this, uh, this Star Terra project. Now, Star Terra is a launch pad Starterra is a launch pad for Terra. And they launched, they had an IDO, not really an IDO, but I guess they, they released some of their tokens via airdrop and then a, a very controversial TerraSwap launch where they started at 14 cents per token, but within minutes, uh, the token was priced at like $30 per. And then from $30, it tanked all the way down to like $4 within minutes. So a lot of people bought between 10, 15, 20, 25. And they're still, uh, you know, they're wrecked. They're basically wrecked. And this was Star Terra's first major impression on the lunatic community. And there's speculation that Star Terra did this, provided low liquidity to that pool on purpose because they are concerned with pumping their own price. So if you do a launch and you have very low liquidity, then when people do buy, the price shoots up very quickly. The other thing they did is uh, usually for pre-investors, people who buy before the launch, they had the opportunity to buy Star Terra tokens at like 12 cents. And usually there's supposed to be some kind of cliff where you can't sell the tokens until like one month or six months or whatever. And then there's like a, a vesting schedule where you get a certain amount of tokens over that time period. Like so Starterra has daily vesting. Now the thing with Starterra was that 10% of the tokens that were given to people who, who paid, you know, the pre-sale 12 cent per token price, they were able to sell 10% of those tokens the day the Terra swap uh, IDO took place. So the speculation here is that Terra, uh, Star Terra provided low liquidity and they allowed pre-sale token people to be able to sell during that low liquidity event. And what ended up happening because of that is that those pre-sellers were able to dump on uh, the people who were trying to buy in early, effectively getting them wrecked. And that was the speculation wasn't confirmed, wasn't, you know, I, I'm a neutral kind of narrator of what's going on here. So I, I don't know the intent behind it. I'm just explaining what some of the community is, is reasoning. And like this, this faction, <laughs> this faction of the community, which is so anti Star Terra, they're very, very vocal. So you can hear them on Twitter. You can hear them in the Star Terra Telegram group. You can hear them in just about any channel, really. Like when the when Star Terra's 
mentioned, it's usually followed by some vitriol. And then they started calling people who pre like the influencers of Terra, like Flamel and everybody, they, they started calling them paid shills because these were now the people who got these early opportunities before they didn't get those opportunities. They got them now because there's new projects coming out. Those projects are vying for attention. They have pre-sale dollars. They're looking to see who's the most influential. They reach out to these people and these people, of course, they say, yes, I would love a pre-sale. Who wouldn't say that? Especially if they think the project is cool. Um, but now it's led to this whole thing. And as of yesterday, it blew up even further because Apollo was doing a community farming event. So what they do with a community farming event is they take a portion of the tokens that they have available and they, they put it to this farming event. So they started with 3 million tokens and they said, okay, if you're, a, if you have mine LP, bring it to, bring it to uh, this app with that Apollo, deposit your LPs or deposit your UST, and we will convert whatever LP rewards you get into Apollo. So at the time, this was a, a couple of days ago, they were converting 100% of the mining rewards to Apollo tokens. So, and each Apollo token cost 25 cents, so it was like a, and Apollo is probably one of the, the first ones in September to offer tokens because everyone else was delayed by the delay of Columbus 5. So what Apollo was expecting was like 30 million total value locked, but it, it went all the way over like 200 million uh, within a couple of days. So they had included mine, pylon, all the M assets, uh, anchor. What they, who they did not include though was Star Terra. So Star Terra reached out to Apollo and they inquired about uh, getting their vault added. And they also did some work up front where they created like, um, I think it was a an anchor style vault or maybe it was a mirror style, vault, but it was it was one of those. So like Starterra created this vault where it was easy to, for anchor to just, or easy for Apollo to, to plug it into their already existing infrastructure. And then Starterra could be a part of this community farming event as well. So why did Starterra want to be involved? Well, I mean, they wanted to do something useful for their community. That was their explanation. Uh, they wanted to give their users a chance to participate in the Apollo token vault. Um, but what other people speculate is every single, so every single uh, pair that was listed in this community farming event, it saw some insane price action gains mostly. So if you look at Pylon, Pylon's kind of been waffling between 14 cents and 17 cents, this kind of thing. But when they had the, uh, when they had this community farming event, mine has probably the highest L incentivized LP out of any tokens so far. So they have like a, a massive LP award of like 100%. So compared to Anchor, which is like 40%, compared to Mirror, which is like 40%, I think Anchor is 90% now, but Mirror is like 40%. What ended up happening was there was a, a significant price spike that occurred. So don't quote me on this, but I think the farming event probably started, I mean, I guess I could just, just check when it started, but the community farming event started on the 14th about the 14th so the 14th is here this is 13th price was at 15 and then the 14th the price spiked all the way up to 20 23 cents almost so it was a massive climb uh, the climb is still happening because mine is still listed there so the idea is if you're a part of the community farming event your token is going to get a pump because people are going to jump into it because there's two ways to join this farming event. It's to bring your existing tokens or it's just to, to bring your UST and Apollo converts it to the token in the back end. So whenever people convert it to a token, of course that applies buying pressure and that's what made this number go up. And mine was doing so well because it had the highest APY of all the, of all the tokens. 
So what Starterra did is, uh, you know, they worked together, they did this thing, they launched it. And then when you looked at the APR, Starterra, I, yeah, Starterra's pool started at like 15,000% or something, something ridiculous. And even as people like, you know, you look at, you look at 100%, and then you look at 15,000%, you're going to assume that most people are going to jump into, jump into the Starterra token. And that's what a lot of people did. If you go to Starterra's chart, you can see that they had a similar jump in price action. So they joined like a day late, right? So I think they joined around here somewhere. So they went from like five bucks all the way up to to set to almost eight dollars. And then they had this giant event where they went even lower than they started. Because people accused them this was just the narrative, the community narrative. People accused them of starting with this really high APR in order to to like just get people to to pump STT to give exit liquidity to existing Starterra investors, and people felt like this was a an acceptable narrative because they already mistrusted Starterra because of their their botched launch. Uh, from the the Terra swap launch where a lot of people got wrecked, and the other like if you just look at the community, I think a lot of people are not pleased with the way Star Terra handles criticism. They don't really uh, explain themselves in like a, a a friendly way. They're very defensive. They like to blame others, and you know the. the once once there's like a target of hatred in a community, it's easy to, to compound that, pile onto that. And then it just became really easy to, to everything that goes wrong, like things always go wrong in crypto, but everything that goes wrong in crypto, it's very easy to just blame blame the person that you're used to blaming. So everyone's used to blaming Starterra. This whole like botch thing, it was Starterra's fault. But, you know, uh, I think when we started dissecting what actually like, how why how did mine have a, a three thousand percent APY APR and how did Anchor have what they had? Well, the explanation there was Starterra had created their own vault for Apollo to plug into. In this vault, Starterra had added tokens that they have reserved for community market marketing events. So, because that pool started with no liquidity and a bunch of tokens. Uh, the APY, APR of that pool was naturally very high. If you look at the other tokens like Anchor, Mirror, Mine, they're, they're plugged from already existing liquidity pools. So people are used to whatever those numbers are. But Starterra, people accuse them of having this really high AP, APR just to manipulate. But then what happened... Uh, on the on the back of that is Apollo made an error where they just the front end wise they were showing the wrong number. So the actual APR was not you know 10,000 3000%. It was closer to like 300 250%. So if you look at it from that perspective, you know Starterra wasn't really doing anything malicious. They just they rushed to create a new liquidity pool for Apollo to use so that their users could get access to Apollo's community farming event. And yeah, um, I mean, everyone's concerned with price action. I, I think for sure, Starterra loves seeing that they're like, they love seeing their number go up for sure. So a part of that was, I'm sure they wanted to take part of this because they knew the number would go up. Um, but at this point, Apollo was already, I'd say, kind of peeved, is my speculation. I don't know any of this for a fact. This is all speculation. But Apollo was peeved because Starterra front ran the announcement. Starterra, like, they said that 
Apollo was launching their their liquidity pool for Star Terra within like 30 minutes or like an hour or something and they gave an exact time period but it turns out that Apollo never confirmed any kind of launch time period so like Star Terra just made that up but there was a miscommunication or that's how Star Terra explained it anyway they said oh there's a miscommunication between development and marketing and that's why this happened but because of that Apollo said they had to rush they had to rush to get this thing out and because they rushed that's where they made the mistake on the front end with the decimal point, which caused the APR to show up as like 5,000% instead of what it really was. A few hours later, they corrected it. But by then, a lot of people had switched uh, their, their pool from within Apollo, from Mine or Anchor or Mirror, one of these M assets. They switched it uh, to Starterra, okay? And they felt like they switched it under wrong pretenses. And other people, they they also switched their liquidity pools from uh, Starterra's own app. They they cashed that out, or they pulled that out of that pool, and then they pushed it into this pool. And to, in order to do that, like without any penalty, you have to pay. Or in order to do that without a five day wait period, you have to pay a five percent penalty. So people saw this big number, the five thousand percent, whatever it was. They said, okay, well, even if I pay a 5% penalty to, to unstake my liquidity in app.starterra.io, I'll still make it up by this insanely high APR, APR here. And then it turns out that the APR is, it is, it is a little bit higher than what you can get staking as a faction person, but it's not that much higher. And the other thing was uh, all these other pools, like at the time, now it changed. It says 10%, 8% goes to Apollo, but at the time it was 100%. So... Apollo launched Mine, Inc., all these others with 100% Apollo APR, but they launched Starterra with only a 5% APR. The other, the rest was just compounding in Starterra. So that wasn't that wasn't shown in the front end at the time of publishing, probably just because Apollo was like rushing to get this thing out. So people also felt cheated to say like I, I did this because I thought I was getting 100% Apollo. But now I'm getting 95% Starterra and 5% Apollo. So it's just this huge shit show. And uh, Pan, Pan, the, the CEO of Starterra, he started showing up in, in various groups like the Tal Ter uh, Terra Bytes podcast channel. He was defending decisions. He was trying to explain what's going on. But at the time, they weren't really sure what was going on, going on either. It was all happening in real time because, uh, you know, that's, that's how crypto was. It was... Apollo was struggling to figure out what was going on. So Terra was figuring out what's going on. And then, you know, it, it seemed like things cooled down. People were still pissed, but it seemed like the drama cooled down. And then, and then Apollo, they announced that, so here's their tweet about, we're pleased to announce Star Terra Vault is now open. They're continuing to partner with communities. And then Apollo announced that they'd be extending their community farming event. And then uh, they announced that they were delisting the Star Terra Vault. And they were explaining why that happened. And the reason that they said they were delisting it is because uh, the contract that they had paired with the Star Terra, they said that Star Terra modified the contract without discussing it with Apollo. And Apollo didn't feel comfortable with having uh, a liquidity pool on their app that was modifiable by a third party that they couldn't control. Therefore, not liking that behavior, they decided to delist Starterra. Starterra came back in their own announcement, and they said that they were uh, they did this because they wanted to add more more tokens to the pool in order to extend the farming event, since Apollo had extended their farming event, and that they were reaching out to Apollo to discuss this extension, to discuss this addition. And since Apollo didn't respond to them, uh, Starterra went ahead and just made the changes to the contract themselves. And because of this, Apollo saw this, they didn't like it, and they uh, they delisted Starterra. And by delisting Starterra, uh, that was the first, you know, the community has always been kind of like vocal about hating Starterra. Like some people think they're, they are, they're whatever. Uh, but this was the first time really uh, like an, an, another app in the ecosystem did something like this involving Star Terra. So it was kind of like a, a moment where this was all building up to this moment. 
and it happened. So the, the shoe fell off the other foot here. And, you know, that just created a whole, whole other uh, bit of chaos. And seeing that happen, I think, I mean, I think people are starting to get like pitch, pitchfork fever in the lunatic community. Um, and it was like everything Apollo did, like, oh, they like, they made up for their, they owned up to their mistakes. They explained it to the community. They said they'd do better. And then they contrast that to Star Terror and they're like, Star Terror is very defensive. They're blaming everyone else. They're not taking any responsibility. And, you know, whether it's true or not, or it's just like a communication thing or whatever it is, it's it's gotten pretty toxic, I'd say, in the lunatic community. And I think it's really easy to be vocal in Telegram. So what I haven't looked at this this Nexus Telegram group, but they made an announcement that they were no longer going to be listing, partnering with StarTerra Nexus Protocol. They said they'll be working exclusively with Pylon now. And the reason they gave uh, for that is to align with the voice of our community. So this was the this was the second app that kind of, you know, Apollo delisted Star Terra, and then Nexus went ahead and de like delisted their eventual IDO that was going to happen on Star Terra. And now, you know, things are just escalating. And then Orion Money, which was also another uh, app that was supposed to launch on Star Terra, they decided to take the other route where they said, you know, we love the community, friendly and engaging it is. We want to promote togetherness, not division. Therefore, Orion will continue having their IDOs on Star Terra. So you're going to you're definitely going to see this. You you saw like just like the evolution of how these things go. Star Terra did something that was kind of make kind of maybe fucked up with their with their launch. And um community members picked up on it. And they weren't happy with it. And that became kind of the narrative where Star Terra are scammers, Star Terra. And then from there, Star Terra could have like work to rehabilitate that image in some ways. But then the, the Apollo thing happened and the narrative became, oh, they just did this to pump their own price. And then uh, the Apollo delisted them and then Nexus delisted their IDO and then Orion is saying uh you know we're not going to capitulate to this we're going to we're going to stand strong stand together not uh you know not fall to this and then some of Terra's biggest influencers who like what I showed you in the beginning of the video they're I don't know I don't know what it is they're they're kind of just not happy with the direction of things. And I mean, if you look at Twitter in general, it's very diverse, it's very, uh, divisive. Lots of things on social media become divisive. Once you have like a set community, anything outside of that, like group think becomes divisive. So I don't know, we, we could be heading down a, an interesting path here where communities have to People in the community, apps in the community, they have to act a certain way in order to get group approval. And if they go outside of that, they get some blowback. You know, this this might be what happens. So we'll we'll see where this precedent goes. It's it's crazy for sure. I think a lot of it is also due to just this Columbus Five delay, like Bitcoin going sideways in the market, things just not really happening, and idle hands create like crazy drama. So here we are. That's the recap. See you guys next time.